So as usual, <clears throat> when I have like a lesson or wisdom, I tend to hit record um, for myself and for others. And while this isn't a, a collective update necessarily, it's it's more personal um, and deep honoring for my own revelation and and when to admit and, and when to um, to realign the reality. There's something about divine surrender um, that pulls in this opportunity to accept and allow things to be what they are here and now without trying to fix or, or change or do or start to live in this future focused reality that pulls us out of the present moment here and now and, and breaks us away from that aloha spirit that that divine perfection and peace in the here and now there's been um for myself, you know, I was on this course, this pathway that I was aligned to, um, that wasn't, it's just not working out, right? It's not working out. And there's been these, these moments of wanting, trying, pushing way too hard, ripping myself out of the present moment and wishing things were different. And while yes, I think it's important for all of us to have some sort of goal, right? While I believe it's important for us to want more, right? For the sake of expansion, growth, so on and so forth. For myself, being a mission-focused galactic, when the time calls for it. Admitting defeat in that I can't is a part of this huge surrender that is required of me right now to embody higher light consciousness through this divine surrender. And so while the pathway was told to me, it's gonna be magical, it's gonna be easy, it's gonna be joyous, that was the hook, line, sinker that the universe needed me to to uh, walk forward with so I could have this experience, right? And so a part of navigating how we work with our guides, with our teams and so on and so forth is to recognize it's a two-way conversation, right? We are here in the human body having the human experience. And while the body catches up to the consciousness, sometimes that dialogue needs to occur between higher self and body so we do not completely break down, right? So I've spoken of break down, break open, break through, which creates resilience. But there's also these moments of putting up the, the slow down sign, right? Putting up the stop sign and saying, I can't, and creating this dialogue of that I am in the form, and the form and the child and all these aspects of the human experience have some prerequisites right now. They have a dialogue and they have things that they need. And those sustainable needs, while might be promised on said pathway or said motion, we have to have a moment of divine surrender and divine neutrality to witness what the message is and what is it, what it is entailing for us and where is it coming from, right? Is it a lower self? Is it a program? Is it the mind? And this navigation point can create such a stir up in the field, almost like a, a, a sense of chaos, of discovery of holograms. You know, um, is, this, is this a program? Is this the truth? What am I following here? And that in itself um, is a part of awakening. It's a part of discernment and it's a part of knowing deep within what to follow. And when this occurs where you cannot make sense of the insight or the guidance or anything like that. It's to follow the feeling and the importance of the feeling space in the higher harmonics. Heart-centered reality, right? And so a part of this heart-centered reality is that if we've been listening too much to one aspect and we're coming into unity, right? We're coming into the unified essence of, 
of what we call body, mind, soul, right? Or um, heart, energy field, light body, all of these things working together. Um, a part of us learning how to navigate and coming into that oneness is sometimes listening to the higher self guides or listening to the ego or listening to what we call lower self guides. Those things are, are gonna provide some sort of, could, could, not always, could require us to listen to the heart more, right? Because I have to be mindful of how this is gonna be worded because it's not true for everybody. In my own journey, I'm finding that right now, the place of peace that the heart is guiding me to is something that is requiring a lot of ego defeat, right? And a lot of admission that I can't. And, and not just I can't, but I cannot do this alone, right? It's the no man is an island. This isn't a one man world. It's not a one man operating system. It's not a, uh, it's not a one man show. <clears throat> and so a part of that steps us forward in through the portal of the heart to walk into unity consciousness and to walk in the unified expression, right? And a part of us, you know, the restructuring of, of the male, right? Or the restructuring of the masculine is being able to be supported and being able to not just do things solely dolly on the own on our own right especially as we are working through a lot of child stuff where we weren't supported where we were abandoned where you know when we were been playing into like the savior and the martyrdom and all that stuff there's this whole kind of collapse that needs to occur through that and whatever the universe will do to guide you through that process and to take you to that place of true humility true surrender and true softness <coughs> excuse me the universe will do and there's been moments on this journey of recognizing that there's karma that needs to shift and programs and so many of these other things but as a result it's this it's this just utter state of allowance right looking at where we don't trust um looking at so many factors and while I recognize even for this next leg of the journey that my universe was trying to provide for me, I can see how each waypoint in the stop would provide me an opportunity to break down more programming. My choice then is to either keep walking forward and to go through that, that crunch and that squeeze, or it's to find myself a safe place so I can work through those things on my own, right? It's recognizing that no matter where I'm at, I can transcend everything from within. I don't need the, the journey necessarily to walk through that. Um, but also too, it's it's that there's things that we we want to accomplish in our world. There are things that we want and we desire. So for myself, it was freedom. I wanna be able to travel more. I wanna get out on the open road. And as soon as I did, I started to witness further down the line, all the things that are getting in the way, physically. Recognizing the light body, how I'm caring for self, how I'm caring for the physical body structure, how I'm caring for the soul, for the heart but also how am I caring for um, my light body vehicle? How am I caring for, for, for my RV and what needs to get done? And so in the admission of defeat that this pathway, the, the choice is I could keep walking on the pathway, right? And I can feel and sense into it that it would be a lot more strenuous than it needs to be, is to recognize, okay, so here's these things that I need to get into alignment in my own reality, right? These are the things that I need to do. And then being able to keep my focus there as I focus on deprogramming when, when I get back to my next spot, right? Collectively, there's a lot of, there's a lot happening. It's been really crunchy over here. We have maybe a day window before we come in and it's back to gates, back to grids, back to shifting, back to tech, back to all these things. And even in my own, um, my own life, it's been um, one of the most um, crunchiest parts of my journey that I've been on in a long time. And gra granted, something that I personally needed to go through, and I recognize that not every human is having this experience right now, but there are many of us that are going through so many layers and threads of poverty consciousness, not feeling supported, abandonment, um, discovery of true essence, um, redirections, loss, mourning, grief, 
heartache, despair, right? We've got this wide range of, of experiences that we're all co-creating in every now moment to facilitate and to assist us in awakening to the true nature of who we are in the essence of love and in the essence of soul and in the essence of higher self in the essence of source. And a part of that is each one of the mappings, our internal mappings of what is needed and necessary to require that expansion and that breakdown and that breakthrough is gonna vary from individual to individual. And so while every experience itself is different, right? In the mapping of what we need or what we call the blueprint or the templating of, of what our soul, higher self is directing and coordinating for us in the symphony of the awakening or the symphony of the unraveling or the, the, the rebuild of who we are. It requires us to tune in every now moment to the song that we are consciously choosing to play through the form as the extension of the universe. And so as an extension of the universe, but being in a human body is requiring the human body to have its necessary unraveling, its necessary comfort, and its necessary support as the consciousness catches up. Because we are here in the human experience having a conscious awakening and it's the consciousness that's riding the vehicle, but sometimes the vehicle needs more time for preparation. And this is the dialogue is, is that remembrance that we all have a process, that we all have a process that we need to go through in our own time and to allow ourselves to have our process. And while the mind want, want to do more, right? And while the, the, the body, well, I wouldn't say the body, but the mind wants to do more and the mind wants to just get it all done, right? Because that's the, the grandiosity of, of the mind <clears throat> for some of us. And thinking that it can, the admission of that it can't provides such a great humbling process. The I can't is what begins to provide a solution, okay? Admission of defeat clears the density and opens up a passageway to an easier, softer reality that is more solution-focused with the higher self and with your universe and with your pathway and i think that's what's really beautiful of being able to admit i can't right is to look at that every action in every now moment because of cause and effect has a particular outcome whether the charge on that or the experience is good or bad a very human thing a dualistic construct that we all built in to, to create more unity and more oneness when we recognize the alchemy of, of putting that heavy charged polarity on the experience. So for ourselves now, admission of defeat, while it might bring in this feeling for us is an important feeling, especially being in a male form and being coded this way, is the admission of defeat is what is going to open up for a new solution. Following that new solution provides a new pathway that is going to create an easier and softer process, even if we've gone through a lot of struggle. It's the ego mind that wants to hold on to the struggle narrative and the proving grounds, right? The proving grounds of I can, I can, I can, because in life we were told we couldn't. And so a part of this is to recognize that in unity consciousness and in the unified expression where we all come together and help one another, right? compassionate action, compassionate witness, the humanitarian aspect is through the admission of I can't, we begin to provide ourselves an opportunity to align to people that can or have a key code for us or have a solution. Not just the, the solo dolo higher self doing this all on my own, but also now the co-creative experience of weaving with other people and allowing our universe to guide us to those people that have those solutions. Sometimes our database doesn't hold all the solutions and what we are waiting for is someone to come in and to basically type in the right keys to be able to unlock the solution within ourselves. And that's a part of the, the experience, right? So there's been this beautiful witnessing of, of what it means to be triumphant in our own reality. And to be triumphant, right, is sometimes the greatest win in our own lives and in all lives is to admit defeat. It's to admit loss. It's to admit that I can't or to admit that I'm tired, right? Part of that admission is now releasing the energy behind that. The thing that's been stuck down really deep inside. So even myself to admit that I'm tired, I can't do this. 
I'm a strong individual, but this is tearing me down. That's what's allowing the male archetype to dissolve the old backbone, right? The rigidity of the experience, the push, 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 the go, go, go. And recognizing how important that is in my own life is now gonna allow the softening, my internal feminine to come forward and to, and to, and to hold that and to nurture that, right? And to nurture that space within myself so I can begin to unlock that, that new coding within me, right? So while I might be on a pathway to a new experience, it's now pushing up forward and through all of the old experience that needs to go and doesn't serve in this new trajectory that I'm trying to walk on for myself, right? And just because you have to go back somewhere, right? Like, so, so for myself, I have to go back home for a little while. Just because I have to go back home, and back home meaning the park, that the RV park that I was at. My, my home is, is right here, even though sometimes it doesn't feel like it, it's learning this. Even though I have to go home, it doesn't mean that I'm walking back into the same situation. Now there might be experiences that I have to go through, right? That's my journey. But it doesn't mean that it has to be because there's a framework and lens and a perspective that is gonna provide that opportunity for me to see the reality however I want. And it's up to me to transcend the duality of the ego mindset from within, right? and to get very, very real with myself so I can activate more of that feeling space. What feels expansive, right? Where does the where do the shoulders drop and where does the body soften, right? Because the consciousness, once again, is anchoring down within, it's descending into the body and the body has to follow the consciousness, but the body can't catch up to the consciousness in resistance. The body can only catch up through allowing. The resistance within the body calls forward an experience to keep breaking down that resistance. However hard you're holding on is exactly the universal match of experience that the universe brings forward to completely open up the cellular body and to allow the muscles to relax. It will break you down however it needs to break you down. So then the conscious choice here is to go, do I keep allowing the universe to do this or do I start to play in divine surrender in every now moment? Do I allow my service role to be that of divine surrender and divine allowance and in divine remembrance to allow myself to open up to new, right? What creates the body softening? What releases the resistance? And how can I begin to do that on my own so then my universe doesn't call for an experience like to, to go through that, right? So it's the the push-pull break, right? We don't, we don't, if that's what we need on our journey, then that's what we need, right? That's what the mapping system is, is creating for us in every now moment. But the push-pull break or the push-pull tear doesn't have to be a part of the reality anymore. So a part of this surrender and allowance is knowing that here and now, I can choose to let go of all resistance and beginning to begin to look into myself and go, where am I not fully surrendering? And in, in every day, how can I give myself, gift myself the opportunity to surrender in every now moment, right? To surrender the body to the process, to surrender the mind to the higher self, to surrender all of me to all of God. Consciousness, source, creator, whatever viewpoint you wanna put on it, right? It's important, right? It's important. And and um, I see that there are quite a few of us that are, that are having this right now, this experience for ourselves. Um, especially those of us that hold on very tight, have a very stubborn or very strong ego is it's a part of the grand humbling and uh, the transcending of, of, of the ego, right? Um, transcending of Maya, um, the transcending of so many things that we're ready to let go of. And so now while I admit defeat on my journey, um, there's this doorway of hope that opens up that um, defeat is not the end um, but the defeat is surrendering to a battle that I don't want to fight anymore, right? And it's a battle with self. Um, it's surrendering um, 4D illusion to a new earth pathway. Um, it's surrendering old mission guidelines to the way things were to allow myself to align to a new one. It's um, surrendering to that which I need the most and to know that I am deserving of all of the rewards and all of the blessings that the universe wants to provide for me here and now. That I'm deserving of all those things. It's an important part for all of us 
to feel deserving of what Source wants to provide for us. And Source knows it can. It's the human that gets in the way, right? And so then a lot of this for myself even is seeing, you know, this journey has been seeing, okay, these are the things that I do want to align with, right? Eventually. But then a part of the body catching up to the consciousness is going, is that available right now? Well, in, in quantum realities, yes, it is, right? But in the process of unfolding that's occurring collectively and individually for all of us, it's about admission that it, it might take some time, right? And so then with that, we create that opening. Yeah, this might not be the, the most amazing way to live my life right now. But in every now moment that I choose softness, I choose serenity, and I choose divine surrender, I'm getting closer to that, right? And that my belief systems are going to be tested. My limitations will be shown to me, right? And it's how how I handle that and what I do with those limitations as I see them that begins to facilitate the opening to the next level within my own journey. Can I let them go consciously, right? Can I begin to say no more to them? Can I allow myself to have my process? But can I be gentle, kind, and nurturing to all of me while I go through the shifts and changes and while I go through the self-realization, the self-actualization of what I am truly in the essence of soul and in the essence of source and in the essence of higher self, universal consciousness, God consciousness? But can I also be gentle with all those parts of me that are still very resistant to the shift and to the change? And, and allow the unconsciousness to be that as it comes into consciousness. Because right. as, as the light kicks up and our unconsciousness becomes conscious again, I can feel like we're flailing around, right? And, um, you know, there's a song coming through. Um, it goes, look around your world, pretty baby. Is it everything you want it to be? And right now, um, when it comes to wants, right, because this is now a, a checkpoint, a narrative for myself, is everything I want it to be? No. Is it what it is? Yes. Do I have the power within me to consciously shift it? Yes. And what that requires to align to that reality is not going to be something that is because mm, even that's encountering your program. See? Being conscious. Being conscious. Being aware of what you say and what you speak into existence. Either way, it's a process, right? And it's, it's my choice on how I choose to witness and view that process. So a part of this balance point is allowing myself to have the process. Allowing myself to surrender that I can't in a lot of ways. Because of the limitations, because of the belief systems, and because of the way I chose to consciously set up my reality, right? And so then now is begin is beginning to make progress by allowing myself to return to heart, to find that place that supports that, to be at heart, with heart, with self, and to allow all the belief system restructuring to occur. And then being mindful of, um, in my engagements and in my encounters, where am I taking on belief systems that, that of others? Am I consciously choosing in every now moment the highest aligned pathway for myself? Um, am I am I listening? Am I paying attention? Am I witnessing? Am I holding neutrality, right? And while the collective is going through what it's going through, can I allow them to have their process and find a place for me where I can just melt, right? And that's the thing is that this isn't readily available for all of us here and now. And I see that and I witness that. But there's a level of responsibility and empowerment at the higher self level where we all have our pathway and we all have to do what we got to do to be able to get to where we need to go. But the way that we align to that is based on our belief systems and based on our morals and ethics, right? There's, 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 there's shortcut ways to get there and then there's really long routes. And for some of us, we have to take a little bit of the longer route and the slower route because that's what the, that's what the, the evolution is calling forward so the body can catch up to the consciousness, right? So the mind and body can catch up to the consciousness of the soul higher self, of the light body, and allowing that to support us, right? So whether your journey home, right, is a, a long one, a short one, a quick one, 
or constantly evolving? Can we all just surrender to the journey and allow it to be what it is without having to judge it, right? Without having to be like, oh, it's this and it's that and I'm not awake enough, I'm not spiritual enough, I'm not doing enough, you know, all the, all the things that start to play, that start to tell you that you aren't. And just allowing ourselves to be that we are. And it might not look like other people's, but it's ours. And that's the beautiful gift and the representation of that present for ourselves is the pure presence accepting that this is how it is right now. And there are things that I could consciously do to shift it in every now moment. But sometimes the surrender of this is the pathway and I'm okay with that, that's where we find peace. And at the end of the day, it's about all of us coming back to peace within, coming back to this really deep knowing that it's okay. It's okay. I might not have everything that I want, but what I have is perfect. And that's when we hit that moment of gratitude, that moment of giving thanks for the experience, that moment of giving thanks for the things we do have. And we allow ourselves to blossom it and flourish those beautiful gifts that have been given to us and, and allow those things to amplify. Yeah. So that's it. I love you guys. Much love and respect to everyone out there. With that, I'll see you soon.